this is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, February 9th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. A day after Microsoft introduced the world to its new artificial intelligence-powered search engine, Google described its new AI-enabled search features. Here's what Prabhakar Raghavan, a Google senior vice president, said at the event in Paris. Through our ongoing investments in AI, we can now understand information in its many forms, from language to images and videos, even the real world. With this deeper understanding, we are moving beyond the traditional notion of search to help you make sense of information in new ways. But investors didn't seem to be swayed by it. Shares of Google's parent company Alphabet closed down 7.4% on Wednesday. So what did Google demonstrate? And how is this leader in search and AI development coping with the competition? Our European tech reporter Sam Schechner joins us from Paris. Hi, Sam. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me. So Google held this event in Paris on Wednesday. Can you tell us what they were showing off? What did they announce? Well, it was an event at Google's big Paris headquarters, and they announced a series of more incremental additions to Google Search and Maps and Translate that they base on AI, as well as giving a little bit more detail about some announcements they made earlier this week about chat GPT style chatbot called Bard and a new kind of Google search result that will use generative AI, the technology behind chat GPT, to give you answers to complex questions. And I think it's that latter part that people were most looking for and and that certainly I was most interested in hearing about. So you were there at the event. What was it like? I mean, was it revolutionary? Did it show you anything you didn't expect? They showed some pretty cool little features, some of which they'd teased before about how you can walk down the street while holding Google Maps up and it'll identify what the places of business are in front of you if they weren't already labeled in real life through augmented reality. And they talked about how they think generative AI can help answer questions that have no one right answer, which is a problem that search results face. They want to put the one right answer at the top of the results page. But in general, I think people in the room who are asking questions maybe were a little unsatisfied with the level of detail about how this would compare to ChatGPT, how this would compare to what Microsoft announced with its integration with ChatGPT. And Google didn't actually say when their new chatbot or the new generative search results would roll out. So we didn't get an answer on timing, but what about on look? For people who've used chat GPT before, will this new Google feature look similar? Well, there's two different products, and that was something they clarified today. There's Bard, which is pretty much chat GPT, although they would argue it's better. It's It has access to information from Google search, for instance. And then there is a Google search product, something that would be in your search results page for certain queries, giving you generative responses. And so they did give a little bit more detail about how that would work. You know, in certain queries, like if you ask a question that doesn't necessarily have a right answer, like the example they gave was, what are some good constellations to look at? It will then draw from a diverse array of sources to generate an answer for you. That's a little different from what ChatGPT does or even from what Microsoft announced where, you know, you were able to type in a kind of complex query and it would compare different things from Bing and give you an answer. Google says they're working on other kinds of search technologies and products based on this underlying technology. But the one today they talked about was this no one right answer result page. We've known that Google has been working on AI for some time. Can you tell us a little bit about their broader efforts in this field? Well, Google was mostly building AI more quietly into its services, like it was improving its automated translations or improving its understanding of your search query so that it would give you better results. Now, obviously, the public interest has changed and the company is talking a lot more about some of these new products that it's rolling out. And the question many people are raising, some investors and even people inside the company is, well, why didn't they put out these products sooner? Yeah, I mean, you've been speaking with experts. What do they say about this idea that Google has maybe been caught on the back foot when it comes to bringing out an AI product? I mean, I think that there's a very real impression that for the first time in a long time, 
there's a potential big challenger to Google search. Certainly Microsoft thinks so. Google's response to that is, well, we are taking a very, the word they like to use is responsible approach to releasing these tools. Because the reality is that these kinds of systems like ChatGPT can, as the word is, hallucinate. If they don't have information for an answer, they will make one up. That might be fine if you're asking it to write a haiku about Winnie the Pooh, but you know, if you're trying to like find out what medicines you can take to cure an earache, you don't want it to give you the wrong answer. And in fact, even Google's own search bot, Bard, in the announcement they made about it Monday, they had an image of Bard answering a question. The question was, what are some facts I can tell my nine-year-old about the James Webb Space Telescope? And people realized that one of the bullet points it gave was wrong. Um, it said <laughs> that the James Webb Space Telescope took the very first picture of an exoplanet, that is a planet outside our solar system, but there are images that have been generated from telescopes, other telescopes, long before the James Webb telescope was even launched. A Google search executive in response when I asked them about that told me that this is precisely the reason that these things require rigorous testing. And that's why they won't give a time frame for when these they're coming out apart from soon, because they're doing a lot of internal testing and now with BARD some external testing to make sure that they meet a standard that Google thinks is sufficient for their products. You know, Sam, we're talking about Google, we're talking about Microsoft. Are there other companies that are trying to get into this AI search space? You know, you can't forget about China's Baidu, which operates the big search engine there. And they have announced an AI-powered chatbot that's called ErnieBot that they say that they plan to launch next month. So it's definitely a competitive space. And I guess what does all of this mean for the future of the web and how we use it? Well, that's a great question. And I think Google would say that their responsible, others might say slow approach, reflects concerns about that. Because not only is there a question about accuracy, but there's also a question about what are people using search engines to do. Search engines funnel a ton of traffic to other websites, news websites, some of the sources that are used to train these large language models. And Google today at their event actually went out of their way to say one of their concerns is making sure that traffic still leaves their website, that you don't just read the generated text on a search engine and never click anywhere. All right. That's our reporter, Sam Schechner. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening. Thank you.